Hey, book lovers. Welcome to While I Read. I'm Katie Dodrell, and today I'll be reviewing seven books that I recently read, five thrillers and two cozy mysteries. Let's get started with the thrillers. First, The New Couple in 5B by Lisa Unger. This is a fairly new book that just came out within the past couple of months. It's about a young couple named Rosie and Chad who are barely making ends meet when they inherit an apartment in a luxurious building in New York City called the Windermere. There are some unusual things that happen. They inherit the apartment from Chad's uncle and his daughter, Chad's cousin, is very angry about this. They have kind of some unusual neighbors in the apartment. They seem nice, but a little bit weird. There's also some questions about the doorman in the apartment. Again, he seems nice, but there are just some weird things. There are some power outages, possibly some ghost sightings. I was getting strong Rosemary's Baby vibes from this book. It's pretty obvious that you're supposed to draw parallels with Rosemary's Baby. The book is set in a luxurious apartment in New York that's very beautiful, but also kind of strange. The protagonist's name is Rosie. In a note at the end of the book, the author, Lisa Unger, said that she did mean the book as sort of a tribute to Rosemary's Baby. However, as you're reading the book, you'll see that she takes it in a whole different direction from Rosemary's Baby. I was definitely interested in this book. I read it very quickly. It was fast paced and I liked the characters, especially Rosie. She was just very scrappy and likable. It has some supernatural elements in it, which I don't love. That's just a personal preference. It also has some chapters from the point of view of a woman who lived in the same apartment in the 60s, and I just didn't enjoy her character or like those chapters very much. The end is full of twist to the point that I was thinking, enough, but it was a fast-paced read that kept me guessing throughout the book. The Sorority Murder is the first book in the Reagan Merritt series. It has another book in it called Don't Open the Door, which I tried to read, but DNF'd. I think I may have just not been in the mood for it at the time that I was reading it, so maybe I'll give it another try. But The Sorority Murder, I really like. It's set on a college campus, and I really enjoy campus thrillers. It's about a former... U.S. Marshal named Reagan Merritt, who starts working with a true crime podcaster who is investigating the death from a few years ago of a member of a sorority. We find out about Reagan's past and about the tragedy that caused her to leave the U.S. Marshals. She's dealing with extreme grief, trying to figure out what to do with her life. Some chapters follow Reagan, and other chapters follow the podcaster, Lucas, who is doing the podcast as a senior project, but we discover that he also has more hidden reasons for it. Reagan is a really likable character to me. As I said, she's gone through a terrible tragedy. She's pulling herself back on her feet. The book acknowledges the tough time that she's had, but it's not sad because she's not just wallowing in her grief. She's trying her best to pull herself out of it. I just really like books that focus on characters who go through tough situations and that explore how these characters are able to come back to it and become whole versions of themselves again. Reagan is living with her dad, who is a retired sheriff, and I really like her relationship with her dad and how he helps her as she tries to put herself back together. So she's working with Lucas on this podcast. They're trying to figure out what happened to this sorority girl. 
who actually murdered her and why. The book is set in northern Arizona, and the scenery is beautifully described. As far as negatives, the book is a little slow to get started. It took me a while to get into it, but I'm glad that I kept reading because it was definitely worth it in the end. This also is not a book that has any kind of huge twist in it. It's more of just a straightforward mystery. You're watching Reagan and Lucas dig through clues and try to figure out what happened. There are definitely some unexpected things that happen, but it's not what you would consider, you know, a thriller with a huge twist at the end. This was a good, solid mystery with complex, interesting characters. It was good enough to me that I read it twice, so I definitely recommend it. The next book I'll review is The Maidens by Alex Michaelides. This book was published in 2021, and ever since it was published, I thought, do I want to read this book? On the one hand, it's set on a college campus, in this case, Cambridge, and I love campus thrillers. But on the other hand, I've read some really mixed reviews about this book, and I just couldn't decide whether it was one that I'd really like. So I finally decided to go ahead and read this book. My verdict, thumbs down. One thing I want to mention, I don't know if thriller is really a good description of this book's genre. I've also heard it called dark academia, and I think that might be a better description of it. I have liked books that are considered dark academia before, but I did not like this one. It was a quick read, and I was interested in finding out what happened. I did finish the book, but certain aspects of it made me mad because they were just so dumb. By the end, I was basically hate reading it to get through, and then I absolutely hated the ending. So first, a quick summary. The book is about a woman named Mariana. She's a therapist and she's dealing with a lot of grief of her own because her husband has died just a year earlier. At the beginning of the book, she gets a call from her niece who is a student at Cambridge. Her niece's friend has been murdered and her niece is really sad, really scared. And so Mariana ends up going to Cambridge to see her niece and help her through her problems that she's having from what's happened. So Mariana gets there. She has a lot of fond memories of Cambridge because that's where she met her husband. So it brings up a lot of, you know, both good and bad memories for her. She starts investigating the murder. So there's a professor at Cambridge, Professor Edward Fosca. He teaches Greek tragedy, and he tutors a group of young female students known as the Maidens. The girl who died was a member of the Maidens, and later another member of the Maidens is murdered. You would think that if a professor has a group of girls who follow him around basically like he's a cult leader. And then those girls start dying. He would be the number one suspect, right? Not in this book. Nobody except Mariana apparently suspects Professor Fosca. They seem to be fine with the fact that these girls dress in white and follow Professor Fosca around that sometimes it's one or more of these girls who provide the alibi for Professor Fosca when one of their members gets murdered. He's not a suspect, and people dismiss Mariana's concerns when she brings them up. Seriously, his alibi for one of the murders is that he was in a private tutoring session with one of the maidens. It's stated in the book that alcohol is usually involved in private tutoring sessions at Cambridge. I realize I sound like an ignorant hick here, but 
the education system that I'm involved in is nothing like the education system sounds like at Cambridge. Like, I won't even be alone in my office with the door shut with a student. But apparently at Cambridge, it's very common to go to a teacher's rooms, a student by themselves, have a private tutoring session while you're drinking. It just seems like a lot of problems could result from this. And in this book, they do. Everyone that Mariana tries to tell about her suspicions of Professor Fosca just seems happy to believe the alibi that his cult members provide for him. She tries to talk to the police and to the dean of the college, but they don't really see Professor Fosca as a suspect. So that made me mad throughout the book because that just seemed totally unbelievable to me. The book did have some pretty good atmospheric parts of it. I like the campus atmosphere. There was one scene where Mariana has dinner with Professor Fosca and it's deliciously creepy. So I liked some aspects of it, but overall I just could not get over the fact that nobody but Mariana suspected Professor Fosca. And then at the end, uh, the end, I just don't even know what to say. The end had a big twist in it. I enjoy a good twist, but this twist just made me feel like I had been tricked throughout the book. It was not a good twist. It seemed to be there just for the shock value of it. And it made me like the book a lot less. This book was a quick read. I was engaged with it, but I was mostly hate reading it by the end. And I did not enjoy the ending at all. I've heard people say that The Silent Patient by this same author is a better book. And he's also got another new book out called The Fury, which is set on an island, something that I always enjoy. But I don't know if I can read any more books by this author. Have you read any books by this author? Let me know what you think in the comments and if you think I should read anything else by him. I definitely can't recommend The Maidens. Next, let's talk about Listen for the Lie by Amy Tintera. This book came out maybe in March. It's been fairly recently. It's about a woman named Lucy who lives in LA. At the start of the book, she's losing her job because her past has caught up to her. There is a true crime podcast that everyone is listening to called Listen for the Lie. And this season, Lucy is the subject of it. Five years ago, she was living in a small town in Texas. She seemed to have a great life. She had a rich husband. She had a beautiful house. She had a best friend in this town that she spent a lot of time with. This was Lucy's hometown, and she basically seemed to have it all. But one night, Lucy's best friend, Savvy, was murdered, and Lucy was found the next day wandering around covered in Savvy's blood. Lucy doesn't remember anything that happened. She ends up being the main suspect in Savvy's death, but she's never arrested or tried for it because there's not enough evidence. This murder destroyed Lucy's life. Her marriage ended. Everybody in town hated her because they held her responsible for the death. So Lucy moves away from Texas to LA and she tries to put this incident behind her. And she does until this podcast, Listen for the Lie, comes out where the podcaster, Ben, is trying to figure out what really happened to Savvy whether Lucy is the murderer or whether somebody else is. So right after Lucy loses her job, her grandmother calls and asks her to come back to her hometown in Texas for her grandmother's birthday party. Lucy does come back. It ends up that the podcaster, Ben, is also in town. He's been trying to get Lucy to do an interview with him, and she's refused but she finally ends up working with him. 
and Lucy and Ben work together to try to figure out what happened to Sadie. Lucy honestly doesn't know if she actually is the murderer or if it was someone else because she doesn't remember anything that happened that night. Overall, I really enjoyed this book. I liked some aspects of it. There were some aspects that I didn't like. Let's talk about things that I like first. I really like the characters. Lucy is a great protagonist. She's smart, funny, sarcastic. I'll read you a line from the book where Lucy is talking about some of the hate emails that she gets and apologies in advance for the language here. Of course, most emails about Savvy don't require a response. They're usually some version of, how do you live with yourself, you heartless bitch, or you're going to hell, except almost always with the wrong your, which is extremely distracting. An insult doesn't have the intended impact when spelled incorrectly. I'd reply to let them know, but in my experience, dumbasses don't appreciate having their spelling corrected. So the book is full of lines like that. How can you not like a heroine like that? I also love Lucy's grandmother. She's having, I think, her 80th birthday as the book starts. And she has basically decided that she's going to do and say whatever she wants for the rest of her life. She is really funny and she's also very loyal and loving to Lucy, one of the few characters who really has Lucy's back. So I like the characters. I also liked the plot. Some of the chapters were from Lucy's point of view, and then there were also chapters that were transcripts of the podcast. I found the book really compelling. I really wanted to keep reading and find out what had happened, who had really murdered Sadie. Now let's talk about what I didn't like. The book had themes of female friendship, and it also explored the complicated relationships between men and women, which I liked. But one of the main messages seemed to be that men are basically awful. I'll read you another excerpt from about the halfway point in the book, where Lucy's grandmother is talking about her own past and about how she admires Lucy. Grandma waves dismissively, but you know what I mean. I never could have left my husband and moved to Los Angeles by myself like you did. I was supposed to get married and stay married so my husband could protect me. I needed to be transferred straight from father to husband or something terrible might happen to me. She takes a long sip of her drink. My life vastly improved once both of those men were gone. Men don't protect us, not really. They only protect themselves or each other. The only thing men ever protected me from was happiness. So I like the message that, you know, women don't have to get married. It shouldn't be something that you're forced into. I don't like the message that pretty much all men are bad. And it's not just something that's said here. It's something that seems to be repeated throughout the book that men are bad, they're going to treat women horribly. Women can't rely on men, they can only rely sometimes on other women or on themselves. So again, that is just a personal preference. I don't really like that message that much. I'm not arguing that women don't experience things like that. They certainly do and it's terrible. It's definitely true of some men, but not all. So overall, I liked the book, and I would definitely recommend it for a good quick read that will also probably make you think. Next, I'll review Every Value Break by Peter Swanson. This was the first book I read by Peter Swanson. I don't know if I'll read any others by him. I liked this book, but I didn't love it. It was very exciting and suspenseful. I couldn't put it down while I was reading it, but even as I couldn't put it down, I wasn't really liking it that much. 
it starts as a woman named Abigail is on her bachelorette weekend. She's about to marry a man named Bruce who is rich, successful, and seems perfect for her. But while Abigail is on this bachelorette weekend, she meets this handsome stranger and she ends up having a one night stand with him. She feels really guilty about it. She agonizes a little over whether to tell Bruce, but she does love Bruce and she's afraid that if she tells him, he will end things. So she decides not to tell him. So Abigail and Bruce get married and they go on their honeymoon. They go to this isolated island off the coast of Maine. Bruce is a part owner of this island, and it's basically marketed as a place where rich people can go to disconnect from technology and just have a relaxing time. Well, while they're there on this isolated island, who does Abigail run into but the guy that she had the one night stand with. So she's really worried, what, what is this guy doing here? He tells her that he's still thinking about her and he wants to try to see if they can pursue some kind of future together. So Abigail is stuck on this isolated island trying to keep the guy that she had the one night stand with from running into the guy that she's married to. So she's in a very awkward position. But then some really weird things start happening on the island. One of the things that Abigail has noticed is that there are not very many women on the island. One night she sees one of the few other women out in the woods running away, seeming like she's upset. So Abigail tries to tell her husband and some of the management on the island about this. But everybody sort of brushes aside her concerns, seem to not really believe what she's saying. And I don't really want to say any more because it's going to give too much away. But more weird things start happening. The book is very, very exciting as you follow Abigail as she tries to figure out what is going on and what she needs to do. I did like the isolated setting of this book. I'm always a sucker for a book that's set on an isolated island. I read the book fast. I definitely wanted to find out what happened. So those were some things I liked about it. I didn't really like the characters in the book. The main character, Abigail, is not very likable. I don't think she's supposed to be very likable, but I tend to enjoy books more if I can identify with the characters. That's a personal preference. And in this case, you couldn't really identify with Abigail or with any of the other characters in the book. This was a fast-paced, action-packed book. It kept me interested the whole time. It's not one that I really loved. Those are my reviews of the five thrillers that I read recently. Now, let's talk about the two cozy mysteries that I read recently. Those are 12 Angry Librarians and Careless Whiskers by Miranda James. These books are both in the Cat in the Stacks mystery series. I actually listened to both of these books while I was on my cruise recently. I had planned to read a lot on the cruise. That was actually something I was really looking forward to, but it turned out to be really windy on our days at sea, and I felt a little seasick when I tried to physically read. But luckily, I had checked both of these books out as audiobooks on Libby before I left for the cruise, and they saved me from having to go for a full week without reading. I loved the audiobooks. The reader had a southern accent and was perfect for this cozy mystery series set in the South. This series is about a librarian at a college library. His name is Charlie, and he has a Maine Coon cat named Diesel who goes everywhere with him. He goes to work with him. He goes to parties with him. He goes to restaurants around town with him, probably a lot of places that 
it would be very difficult to take a cat in real life, but we don't read cozy mysteries to read about real life. I've read several books in the Cat in the Stack series, and I always skip around. That just seems to be what I do in cozy mystery series. 12 Angry Librarians is number eight in the series, and Careless Whiskers is, I think, number 12 in the series. I just pick books that I'm interested in, regardless of what order they come in the series. And I've never really had a problem with it. It's always really easy to catch back up and figure out what's happening. I started reading this series because it's set in a college library. It's set in the South. The main character, Charlie, is in his 50s. He's very likable. He's gone through some tough events in his life. His wife of many years has passed away. He has retired from his full-time job and he's moved back to his hometown of Athena, Mississippi to work part-time at the college library there. He makes a nice life for himself in Athena. He has some good friends. He has his cat named Diesel. And Charlie ends up solving a lot of mysteries that take place. A lot of murders happen in this peaceful small town in Mississippi, and with the help of Diesel, Charlie is able to solve those. There are some really great secondary characters in the books. Charlie has a housekeeper named Azalea, who is really funny. She cooks delicious southern food for him that I always like to read about. He has some boarders who live in his house with him who are really good characters. And he also has some family members who the book describes really well. 12 Angry Librarians is about a conference for librarians that's being hosted at Charlie's College. Of course, one of the librarians ends up being murdered. It's somebody that Charlie doesn't like, so he's a suspect. So he has to figure out who the real murderer is. The other book that I read, Careless Whispers, is about a play that's being put on at the college where Charlie works. His daughter, Laura, is an acting teacher as well as an actress. She's acting in the play and another actor who she doesn't like gets murdered. Laura is a suspect and so Charlie has to help prove that Laura didn't actually commit this crime. I always like to read books that take place around the theater I guess because I've acted a little myself and the backstage drama is always fun to read about. I enjoyed reading both of these books. This is just a very comforting series to read as cozy mystery should be. So I definitely recommend both of these books as well as the entire Cat in the Stack series. So there you have it, seven book reviews. I hope some of these sound like books or series that you might enjoy. If you read any of them, please let me know what you think. And please drop any recommendations that you have in the comments. Of course, if you like this video and you want to get more recommendations and book reviews, please subscribe. Now, go cook supper while I read.